The wagon hauls have passed the test PH Jeff Rand has given them by going into the midst of herds of buffalo and keeping their cool. Now the game will be played for much higher stakes as the real hunting for a trophy bull begins in earnest. Africa has been a land of hunting and hunters, white and black, for untold thousands of years. Hunting created the very shape of the continent's ecology, and there's no question that it's the support of hunters and hunting that's maintained the great herds of wildlife that still roam the African bush. Today, though, there may be a misguided change in the winds of fashion, a change that one-sidedly favors the camera-toting tourist and could ban from the Okavango the more intimately involved and environmentally more valuable participant in Africa's wilds, the hunter. Hunting is about selecting a particular species and working with government agencies to help control and perpetuate the population. So many people don't really have an understanding that, that hunting is about preservation. They think it's just about killing. And if they're not allowing themselves to at least understand it, and maybe it's not for them, but to support my effort, so we don't have to have culling programs and mass extermination and these things going on. It's no longer a hunting world, unfortunately. The hunters, the indigenous hunters, actually kept the population down. They were involved in the dynamic mosaic of wildlife. American writer, photographer, and artist Peter Baird decided half a century ago that he was on the wrong continent and moved to Africa. He's seen both sides of safari, photographic and hunting, and knows how good intentions can go bad. Elephants will knock down the trees, then they'll eat the grass when they're browsers, then they'll eat the weeds, then they'll eat solid wood. Then they'll die of stress-related illnesses like heart disease and starvation. Baird saw this in Kenya, and now Harry Selby, the PH who rose to fame in Robert Ruach's books, sees the same threat looming over the wildlife of Botswana if the politically correct model of game management takes over. An elephant is quite different to a lot of other animals who will use the habitat but don't destroy it. An elephant will destroy the habitat. An elephant will walk up to a tree, push it over, eat a few twigs off the end of it, and walk up and push down another great big tree. Well, here's a tree that uh, came down last night. It's a big leadwood. This tree's probably 50, 60 years old. Uh, I can tell a bull knocked it down his tracks right here. And that's what they do. These bulls, they come in and test their strength on these trees. And this is happening every day in the delta now. Uh, you're seeing tremendous uh, habitat damage by these bulls. Roark quoted an African proverb that before throwing away old traditions, there should be something of value to replace them. If the proven management tool of ethical licensed hunting is abandoned in the Okavango, what can replace it? The absolute best thing you can do for wildlife is, is to create um, a financial basis where it, it has a value and, and everybody knows that value and appreciates that value, even if you're not uh, a hunter. And, and it, it brings in a financial basis to sustain wildlife and, and to keep these areas pristine. And following on my interest in photography, which led me eventually to build three photographic lodges in the concession. From what I have observed since then, I think I might have reconsidered my decision to do that if I realized that thousands of tourists passing through an area can do more harm ecologically to that area than if you said a couple of dozen hunters at that same time. It's a fact here in Botswana that um, hunters are less than 5% of the total tourists that come into the country, but they, the revenue generated from those, those 5% uh, is, exceeds 50% of the total revenue. The license fees and a lot of the, the fees that are paid go back either into the local community or directly into the wildlife department and the government. And, uh, you know, this is a natural world heritage site now, the Okavango Delta, and uh, it's protected forever. Well, Teddy Roosevelt was the father of conservation, and he put it out a century ago. When left alone, all species of birds and mammals will reproduce until it is necessary to manage them, to cull them. The foolish sentimentalists who are unaware of this are the real enemies of all future movements for conservation.
Another daybreak brings another day of hunting in the Okavango. Wakened by the early morning smells of the campfire and sounds of rifles being carried to the vehicle, the safari moves out from camp and onto the trail of the buffalo and to the inevitable encounter for the wagon hauls and ran with dangerous game. We got on them the second morning and uh, picked up the tracks. Um, they'd moved into some thick stuff. Not sure whether they were lying on them or not. Normally, these herds have lying with them every night. They, they just don't get a break. There, that big bull's coming in. He's going to chase out of the bull. Not the one. Not the one, not the one behind him. Yeah, no. That's a good bull. We were in the middle of a herd of about 500, Jeff was estimating. And uh, man, when he said, let's just kind of like walk around and, and get up on him. You know, if we weren't hunting with Jeff Rand, I would not have trusted anybody else to take me in, but he is the dangerous game king. Let's go around. The wind is a bit of a problem. There's another, another bull here on this side of us. He's going to catch our wind. If he runs on that low run, They're always on the move, always on the run, always on the lookout. And so they're not easy. Once you uh, get a beat on one of them, you better take it when you can. A poet asked, what but the wolf's tooth could have shaped the swiftness of the pronghorn antelope? And in Africa, the question is, what but the lion could have given the Cape Buffalo its instinct for survival? Thousands of years of life and death have taught the buffalo that there's safety in numbers when dealing with a lion. But there also has to be an ultimate fortitude that makes the lone buffalo stand its ground in defense of itself or its young. The main thing that I learned was how tough an animal these, these animals are. When you're going after these, you've got a dangerous situation that the rest are going to charge you after you've shot this animal. There is yet another poem, a poem by native African hunters that tells us, when you hear thunder without rain, it is the buffalo approaching. And that's a sound no hunter, lion or man, wants to hear coming his way. Because it means that what should have been a clean, safe kill of a buffalo has gone very, very bad. I've been charged many times by buffalo and uh, wounded buffalo and been able to stop him. One time I didn't. From what happened to Jeff when, you know, he, he got attacked by a Cape Buffalo and got tossed and had to have back surgery and all sorts of stuff, I knew that these guys weren't critters to be reckoned with. It's, a, it's a, one of the closest calls I've had. I've had a few, but that was one of the closest. Among one of the greatest concentrations of big game in Africa, in Botswana's Okavango Delta, Avid hunters Fred and Heather Wagonhalls have come to Rand Safaris on a quest to take all of the continent's dangerous seven. On this leg, the Wagonhalls are following PH Jeff Ran on the track of one of the most deadly of the seven, the Cape Buffalo. It's a big, it's a really big herd. They go from here all the way back there. Just kind of try and get around in front of them and they'll come to us. because they'll pick up movement. Yeah. Yeah. Just watch that bull with the white birds. Big bull, but it's a little bit soft. OK, there's a big bull right in front of us, to the, next to the green bush, the far, far right. OK. See him, his head on. He's looking at Tom. OK, get on him. Get on him. Just come around, come around. OK, you see him? He's on the edge of that bush. He's right near the green bush. Yep, I got to be Far on. right. Take him right in the chest. Good shot. Okay, Fred, take him. 
Good shot. Good hit. Okay, come. Let's go. Leave the sticks. We haven't got too much light, so we need to get on him fast. Great shot. Okay. Just put one right in his chest. Okay. Good shot. All right. <laughs> Good job, Heather. Great shot. <laughs> Good job. I had to swing around and locate his chest and then just take my shot. Part of the herd spooked. She got a shot off. Perfect shot right in the chest. Fred followed up, hit him as he was going away. I was there as the backup shot, but you always know that Jeff's there behind you with that double barrel. When I got up on him, I was able to see exactly why I needed so much firepower, because these are massive animals. Beautiful bull, huh? I mean, we looked at a bunch of them, and we just had a perfect setup where they kept coming through, and then as he stuck his head out, I knew it was the one. But look at those big hooks, how they come back. Yeah, you hit him great. He didn't go 100 yards. And with it getting late like this, it's important, you know, we haven't got a lot of light. And it's hard to track you a made, wounded animal. You know, a lot of patience on your part to wait for the right one. Oh, and I, I saw it saying, too. That looks big. That looks big. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> nice to be in the middle of it. It's amazing <laughs> to be inside all of those animals yeah. coming at us. And uh, boy, I didn't want to breathe. <laughs> Once someone is exposed to what hunting really is, and it's more about preservation of our natural resources, you can't not want to hunt. It was a great hunt, and uh, it's a good introduction for Heather to the Okavanga Delta. Now that I've taken up hunting, it's a passion like I, I want to go every day if I could. Cape Buffalo is something you can get addicted on. It's, it's a great hunt. Uh, you get in close, you, you see lots of buffalo, and it's a trophy that, that a client will keep coming back and forth for time after time after time. This animal was so magnificent that I would love to spend a bunch more time just following the herd, really getting to know the animal, and, and finding another quality harvest like the one that I have.